Mo, re-entering the game, had decided to take out the Nile Guard in the southwestern tower of the secret base using the torpedo mode of his new Rocket Ranger power suit. Wait a minute. That's right, folks. He left the story as Mo, the Wonder of Dinos, an Optin of the Living Land, and somehow, through a wonder inexorably tied to the Nile Empire and their world law of inevitable return, became a Rocket Ranger from Chicago in the United States of America, on Terra. For the first time in our game, I had to look up some information about Rocket Rangers, which I've always been enamored of. Rocket Ranger, Paul Powers, Knucklehead. Okay, uh, let's see. Rocket Ranger battle suit. You've got the cooling vents crash could, torpedo mode. Okay, speed value 16. Okay, we're going to use your speed value 16 as your damage value against the trooper. Um, I want you to go ahead and roll a, uh, a roll for your... You have air... Ve well, air vehicle sucks on you. Um, but it might be the only... Might be the only thing you've got. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, roll your air vehicles and add two uh, to your total. You're, you've got a modifier of two because this is a surprise. Even with a bonus of plus two to his air vehicle skill due to surprise, Mo could not hit the tower accurately, and he might have failed, but I added him to the turn tracker and adjusted his number for the roll. I probably should have entered you on the turn order first. Okay, so do you do you want to add a possibility? Because your result is terrible. <laughs> you need at least an eight. After realizing I had not yet given Andrew his destiny cards, I worked to dole those out to him, and then, having received some quote-unquote fantastic, but not incredibly useful cards, he was able to spend a possibility, getting a... Um... But, okay, so that's, uh, let's see, total roll would be a 17. Uh, let me call up the bonus chart. Okay, so 17 gives you a plus 4. Uh, so, let's see. Okay, the top of the, you're, you're able to get the top of it to, to kind of explode offwards of, of the, uh, uh, of the area. Now, um, this guy, uh, let's see if I can... Um, okay, your Cosm card is going to have a picture of your Cosm logo on the bottom, which for you should be a, like an alligator head. Okay, uh, so... Okay, I'm going to try and figure this out. Okay, so that's eight. Um... Mo asked how much armor the roof of the tower would provide, seeking an answer to how much damage the shock troop inside would actually take. So this guy is now lying on the ground outside of the fence. He is incapacitated. Let me... Uh, let me see if I've got an incapacitation here. Uh, let's see... Grappled, no. NPC injured, yes. Uh, okay, no. Um, he's stymied. He's vulnerable. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for him right now. Um, and I'm going to say it's for... Six rounds. Holy moly. Let me go get my dice. So that guy is unconscious. Yeah. Mo then decided, at my strong behest, to cross the rooftop of the PBY, PBY seaplane hangar in order to make his grand re-entrance with the rest of the knights, whom he did not know were there at all. After taking a short break, and with Mo and I rejoining the main channel, play continued. Ye all of you heard a noise. It sounded like wood was cracking. Um, and and uh, all of you have, let me get back to the map here. Um, all of you have more or less, uh, you see, uh, yeah, I'm in the right spot for that. 
you see this right here, okay? Are all of you kind of paying attention to where I'm at? When asked what it was I was pointing at, my friends became happy when I explained. That is probably about a 55,000 gallon uh, uh, tank, uh, fuel tank. And this right here is cover. Yes, that right there is cover, but uh, Thuban, um, you are still dressed up. Uh, what are you dressed up as again? The scientist? I'm dressed as Okay, you're okay. You're dressed up as the military guy then. Okay, that could prove to be interesting. Oh my gosh! You okay? You heard noise, and it was coming from the direction of being behind the hangar. Okay, so in this direction. Okay. Um, Thuban, you notice this guard right here. His back is to you, but um, you can actually float a little bit higher than what this vehicle allows, and, and you can also see that there is a fairly well-dressed individual here, a little bit better dressed than, his, uh, than, than the guy that's walking next to him. Are they coming toward us or away from us? Um, these two are coming towards. Uh, this one and the dog are going uh, away from. Now, I have to roll something. Hang on just a second. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, the wind has shifted and it seems to be coming in kind of from the seashore now. Just a little bit. Um, it's been kind of working its way around the base. So, actually, you guys have had perfect wind cover. <sighs> anyway, um, <laughs> um, I was hoping the dogs would smell you, but no. Um, Josh commented about finally getting a lucky break. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, so, what are you three going to do? Thuban thought it best to have the knights act as though they were going toward the large aviation fuel tank to investigate the noise, which Peaches agreed with. Okay, these two are completely oblivious to the noise. It, it seems like you heard an echo from over in this, in this direction, okay? But uh, the, the sound itself... I, I don't know how to describe that. Hmm. Now, what about this guy? <laughs> yeah, he's oblivious too. So, here's, <laughs> here's what we're going to do. You guys are trying to sneak around. I got that part. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Thuban, give me a D20 roll. Just a straight D20. Just a straight D20. I'm trying to figure something out here. Oh, jeez, of course. At that point, I rolled to determine whether or not the disguised characters had been seen, and rolling a natural 20, I determined the sergeant and his accompanying shock troop had, indeed, seen our knights. Coming over to... So these guys uh, walk up... And they're kind of surprised to see Khufu there. And both of them stand at attention and salute. And it's it's the little it's the little fist against the chest thing. Salute. To you, Thuban. Josh attempted to answer the Nile salute with quote unquote as you were. And would have kept walking, but not being from any military, let alone the Nile Empire, we established he would indeed not be familiar with that phrase. Ginger suggested mimicking their, their actions back to them, but Thuban's disguise simply nodded and gave a brief, grunted acknowledgement. The three of you... Oh, wait a minute. That's right. Uh, the three of you can go ahead and move. I keep forgetting. I got to do something real quick. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's where they were. They can only move two squares, so because there's three meters per square. Okay, so they see you moving out, and um, 
they kind of do the same thing. Um, and let's see, those two move forward. Um, now, what I need to do is open this guy up and let's see. Does he? No, he does not. So, um, submit. Okay, so. No, no, no. No, that's not bad for you. That's good for you. Uh, the squad sergeant uh, was was uh, trying to, to think about where or why Thuban or why Khufu would be out this far. And he sees uh, the other two and but they're you know they're walking with Khufu so it's it's not that big of a deal they probably saw Khufu with Carl earlier in the day but why would Hildegard Marlin be with those two well they're both young men so he kind of just figures on what's taking place and and just goes about his his way after saluting you and you return it so Mo yes um, okay, you, uh, Mo is on the board. You guys don't know this, so shush. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, you can move. Keep in mind, each square is three meters, okay? So I think yeah. you, you've only got, what, six for your decks? Okay, so you can move yeah. two spaces. Now, if you move diagonally, that takes up both of your spaces just for moving one diagonal, okay? Yeah, right. it's like running all out three times there, right? Yes. Yes, precisely. But if you move all out and you try and make a stealth test, you're going to be at a penalty of two. If you move all out and you don't make a stealth test, you're going to be making all kinds of noise against this metal roof. Mo decided to move a small amount as he worked to arrive at the peak of the hangar roof. Then we moved on to the next round of, of movement in which I required. All four of you Go ahead and give me a find test, please. Nothing for Peaches unless she wants to add. Saban is good. Ooh, Chris is really good. And a result of 18 at that. Okay, and Mo, where's yours at? And 11. Okay, so unless Peaches wants to add a possibility or a card. Okay. Alertness. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, so all four of you detect yelling coming from the other side of the base and an alarm sounds. <laughs> Yep, you you know those old wind up alarms, the yeah, like that. Uh, one of those starts uh, going, and you hear a very shouty, bitey voice uh, uh, on the other side of the base um, uh, in Egyptian. Now, Peaches, you'll understand it, but Chris, you're too far away for the. Uh, for that translator you have to pick up what is being heard. Peaches, you hear infiltrators on the base. Peaches suggested finding cover, and fast. Thuban then joked about using, quote-unquote, that large metal object, meaning the aviation gas tank outside the hangar building, giving everyone a solid laugh. Peaches then interpreted what had been said about intruders to the other players being on the base. Then it was time to introduce a drama card, taking us into rounds. I'm not going to have enough room for all this stuff. Uh, let's put the turn order up there. I'm just going to have to keep moving stuff around because I don't have enough screen to work with. Okay. Unpleasant surprise. That's perfect. Ginger asked who Thuban had made look like Hildy, to which he responded he'd made Chris look like her while Penny looked like Carl, Marlin's now former assistant. Then, Peaches took Chris by the arm, acting like her escort, and looked, to, looked around to see if there was any place they could duck into, escorting her to someplace safe. Chris suggested the nearby hangar. I, in the meantime, sought to bring up an image of Hildy Marlin. 
There's Hildy Marlin. Chris, that is what that is what you presently look like. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> thought you might like that okay so it's the first round of combat the base has just gone on absolute alert and we are going into scene two all of that was scene one and you trip scene two at a perfect time you didn't have any cards in your pool so that's back there uh if you have less than five cards anybody with less than five cards now who's i am let me get that open real quick Destiny deck. Deal. Okay, who needs one card? Uh, one, at, one at a time. Ginger? Okay. And who is I? Yes. Yeah, you're supposed to have a total of five cards. I also need a card. And that is Chris. Okay. And then Mo, you, sh you have all yours, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I'll need to explain something before the round begins. Now, uh, players with a hand of more than four must discard down to four. Well, in this case, five. If you have more than five, you have to discard down to five. And if you want, you can choose one of your cards to exchange. So you would get rid of a card that you have and ask for another one. But you got to tell me your name. Josh chose to exchange his Step A card while Connor tried to decide whether he wanted to keep his Martyr or not. Well, now, what does Martyr say? Does it say you can exchange it for a possibility? Understanding the nuances of their cards, Connor noting the exchange of his Nemesis card would net him a new Destiny card and a possibility, I then dealt both Josh and Chris one Destiny card each and added Chris's possibility. This satisfied their exchanges, so I moved on to Peaches. All right, so you should have those new cards in your hands right now. Uh, Penny? I instructed Ginger, because we were beginning combat, to place a card in her pool to meet her Situational Awareness perk then asked whether or not she still wanted to play her Cosm card, denying that she instead intended to play her... Connection! Oh, that's oh. going to be perfect. But it's going to have to wait a little bit. So I'm going to ask you to take the card back into your hand, because there's, there is one person on this base that can help you, but not right now. Okay. Okay, where's the card go? Okay, it's right back there. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and take that one back in, and I will try to remember that you've got that connection, okay? okay. That's perfect. That's a wonderful card. Okay, so let me zoom back in here just a little bit. All right. The name of the card is Unpleasant Surprise, which is what you're getting from all the yelling and everything like that. Uh, you are not doing a dramatic skill resolution, so you don't have to worry about that. Reality Rated Villains each gain a Destiny card. Um, it is played at the first opportunity where it becomes applicable. Good God. This scene, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change that to Villains. Oh, Villains are already supposed to flurry. <sighs> Okay, instead of putting out a Destiny card, I am going to... Um, the first two shock that they gain, they don't gain it. Okay, and that's that's every, every bad guy on the base. So, uh, heroes get to go first, but villains are flurried. And, of course, a flurry... Uh, means the side effect of the flurry gains an extra turn. That side acts on their turn, then each takes another turn to end the round. The side is not extra fast, they just acted when others hesitated. Now, if I'm not mistaken, one of you has uh, something that allows you to change the conflict line on these cards. Josh had a monologue card which could have helped were it in his pool instead of his hand. Well, that's not going to help you very much here. Uh, okay, so approved actions are taunt and trick. Um, before the three of you go to act, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the three of you, well, you all can plan together, I, I think. Where's Mo at? How close is Mo? Not close enough. 
So, yeah, there's uh, there are going to be two two groups this turn. There's going to be uh, your group and Mo. So uh, heroes get to act first. But before we really start this, and this is not going to count against you, uh, Peaches and Chris, I need you to roll find tests. I, you know, Thuban, go ahead. You you roll a find test as well. Um, you don't really hear though, so I'm I'm gonna ask you to do a penalty of two. I asked for find tests from Peaches, Chris, and Thuban. The latter of the three with a penalty of two to the outcome because Stallingers feel and equate noise to sound rather than hearing normally. Josh generated a total of 11. Penny, rolling poorly enough, she could only hear the intruder sirens of the base. Chris, finally, rolled high enough that his ear caught a sound emitting from a shed behind he and his friends. And it sounds like these doors right here are rattling. Go. It's it's your turn. Make a plan. Figure out what you want to do. Uh, that is a door, yes. Peaches expressed it would be best to duck inside the hangar, and though I pointed out multiple doors, she began measuring distance for each. Well, probably this one is going to be closer, but yeah, you can measure. Yeah, that one's definitely closer. Peaches decided that was the correct door to enter the hangar through. Are you still just walking or are you running? Josh confirmed they were now running due to base sirens and increased hostile activity all around them. At this point, a round of technical difficulties reared their ugly, multi-headed, monstrous bodies, forcing several of us to at least reload Roll20, while others had system failures and needed to completely reboot. Once all of us were back, though, I asked. Andrew, did you have Mo run across the roof? Yes, I did. Okay. Back to the noise from the siren and all that. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be difficult, but it'll be interesting. So, uh, Chris, Peaches was saying to, that you guys need to run for down here. Okay. You, you don't hear anything from the guards. Uh, they're going to be kind of busy, but you do hear a bunch of clattering on the roof above you. It's it's above and forward. It's it's this roof over here, okay. Uh, you don't you don't actually see anything up there. You're too close to the building, and it's a hangar. Hangars are typically pretty tall, okay. This one stands this one stands about thirty five about about eleven meters in height before you get to the rooftop, and it does have a cornice rooftop. So it's, it's got this area in the middle here. Let me just kind of move things over. Okay. It's got that center area that is kind of arched up. So you still can't see who is, is on the other side of that rooftop. It's one of those older hangers. Okay. So if you guys are running, determine who... Uh, Deter you know what? Do your own running speeds, okay? Um, and just remember. Oh, that's right. You you can't run. <laughs> Ginger offered to cover Thuban from behind. The latter admitting he didn't have a behind, and he came up with an alternate plan himself to distract the bad guys by darting around instead. So, Thuban. You have two spaces that you can move. I want you to move first. And then Peaches and Chris, you guys can determine how you're going to move, and Mo has already moved. We took a few minutes to sort through Ban's movement, though he would soon find out. Okay. Yeah, if, if you move there, you're, you're going to be getting in closer, and they can move around you. Remember, these squares are three meters. Right. So nine meters square is, is what you've got, and uh, and and they can actually they can actually enter your same space if they needed to. 
So that's actually two for peaches right there. So, yeah. The first round of movement, especially with all the bad guys having flurry, made things interesting for the heroes, though the effects likely would not be known until the following round. The patrolling sergeant yelled halt to the disguised knight, bringing with it the attention of the dog handler. Ending this round, I drew a new card for the new round. It's kind of a race at this point. Let me kind of blow that one down a little bit. All right. Will our hero survive? Dice added by <laughs> dice added by possibilities or an equivalent don't add a minimum of 10 this round. So, um, whatever you roll on your possibility is what you get. Okay. Now, oh, you guys are going to hate this. Uh, the villains get to go first. And then you guys uh, are going to face a surge. So we're going to have us some fun. Uh, oh, man! Surges <laughs> suck. Uh, yeah, surges are not the greatest. Okay, so these guys come down like so. And uh, this guy right here points an MP40 at you. Uh, at, at, at uh, well... At Thuban in particular, because uh, at the at the uh, lieutenant, because he's obviously not the lieutenant, and then this guy just points a Mauser pistol. Ginger asked why they were suddenly being targeted. Because all of a sudden there's intruders on the base, and there's an odd lot of folks moving around the base. My friends continued attempting to reason with me about why they still should not be targeted, while I had to explain to them again about the unusual group strolling along on the base while the alarm klaxons were sounding. Besides... They've never seen Hildy Marlin on any part of the base other than her house and off the base. So you have an opportunity here... But you're, you're going to have to hang on until it's your round. I said, halt, identify yourselves. Now, when you get back around, when we get around to your turn, we'll deal with the surge, and then we'll deal with um, uh, trying to convince old boy. Now, the dog and, let's see, one and one. Okay, let me move other bad guys around too. Uh, let's see. Oh, hey, I get to reduce that guy to four. Uh, Mo, you can go ahead and move. And I will deal with how uh, your character lines up with everything in just a minute. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Not bringing them out yet. Okay, um... Okay, so let me deal with Mo real quick. Uh, was there anything in particular that you wanted to do this round um, on top of moving? Um, I'm trying to decide. I'm thinking about doing a rush to that building over there. But mm -hmm. I've, got to, I've got to break out a uh, dogfight. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually it worked pretty well. It worked really well. It helped you to get onto the base. <laughs> Mo decided to perform a rush maneuver, but couldn't well see where he was going. Actually, this uh, shock trooper right here, you can see, but these two guys in the dog, you can't. Um. <laughs> Let's see, that close to the edge of the roof, you see these two guys closing in. Uh, let me let me kind of center here. I attempted to point out a few bad guys Mo could see, but Andrew reported he couldn't see anything. This was because Roll20's dynamic lighting was in development flux back then, and the correct settings did not suffice. Andrew said this was to his good, though, because... If I can't see them, they can't see me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If, if you're saying you okay. 
Okay, um, so yeah, you really can't see anything from where you're at, and they, and again, yeah, you're right, they can't see you. So did you already move? Um, okay, now you may not be able to move your, uh, your token beyond about here because I've got dynamic lighting. Yeah, but I can move you over. Now, how many spaces can you actually move? I think it's what, 18? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You should have a movement, a, a run of 18, right? I have a run of 18. Okay. But I, I didn't know to run to the, uh, I didn't know to run to the uh, area of the Okay. Okay. I could get to that other building. Uh, by flying? Yeah. Okay. Now, well, now wait a minute. Keep in mind that move of eleven is eleven meters. So you would still only be able to move two spaces and around. Did you run into that wall though? Well, no, no, I haven't run into the wall. I just moved forward to. Okay. Now I can see down into the lower wall. Okay. 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 Well, you're you're past the wall anyway. I just checked on that, the dynamic lighting, and of course it's still not working the way it's supposed to. So, okay. So anyway, can you can you see what's going on now? Because you should be able to see all three of these guys and the dog down here now. Uh, yes, I can see C squad. And I can see uh, the bar and the uh, Yeah, and the bar. Are you saying he's Thu Bar? <laughs> Instead of Thu Bar? So, so I can see like Okay. Um, well, you you actually can't see Mo. He is looking uh, down from the roof. Now, Thuban, you can actually kind of sense his movement, but only because of the way that you quote unquote see. But you can't tell if he's a good guy, a bad guy, or or what the deal is. Well, I, I've moved the bad guys. Um, they're not going to open fire yet, okay? They're, they're just trying to figure out who you are and what's going on. Uh, heroes have a surge. So would all... Uh, before, here's the thing, though. I have the, um, I have the uh, monologue card in my pool right now. Okay. And I have the monologue Read, read the monologue card for them. I'll put it to you this way. Unless you have another card that you can play. Uh, let me let me grab that monologue card. Uh, if you have a card in your pool that can help you with your monologue, that's great. But I will give you a possibility if you, as the player, can talk Thuban as Khufu out of the situation. it is. Uh, did you select your character before? Nope, you did not. Uh, no, should I re-roll? No, let me change your number here. Okay, now if you want to throw a possibility at it, you can do that or a card. 
Josh asked his friends if any of them had cards to support with. Since we're in round, you've got to make sure that it's something in your pool. Am I missing something? A card had been played, but I couldn't locate it. Where is it? Oh. Oh, do you want to do you want to grab that back? Uh, no, no, play, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, play to trigger a setback for the opponents as though it appeared on the drama card conflict line, a setback, how would I do that, okay, you know what, here's, here's, okay, you know what, I'm going to have that work, on uh, the squad sergeant uh, and the other two guys and the dog. Well, the, the dog walker obviously has, you know, someone in hand. Um, how, how do you, I, I know what you said, um, uh, uh, Josh, about, uh, you know, getting them to do their damn job and everything like that. How, let's see. It's a setback for them. How am I going to run that? What do you like point anywhere to have them, you know, go check something out? I pointed at the noise I heard at the moment I saw it on the roof. Sorry. Okay. I wouldn't have known that was our our side. Um Okay, uh, yeah, they go to point their weapons up uh, at the shadow of Mo, um, who is uh, obviously clanking around on the roof, even though he's trying to, to do something, you know, special. Um, let's see, this guy right here, uh, I'm going to kind of center the map again. Okay. Uh, sorry to be done, but uh, you know what, you do. You do. Go ahead and add a possibility. Uh, oh, and a card. Hang on. Let me deal you one card. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. And then, yeah, for the approved action. Okay. So, Mo, um, yes. this guy right here with the dog cannot see you. The, the, the ceiling is too high up. Uh, the squad sergeant here can barely see your upper half, okay? And old boy here can't see much more. Um, he can see probably your hips up, okay? And, of course, you know, uh, you're kind of looking down on these guys, but this guy right here doesn't have very much of a profile. This one, not much more. And you can see this guy pretty well, though. So, um... You did the monologue card. Uh, what else? What else special went with that? Uh, uh, to ban. Okay. So then, uh, Mo, Peaches, and Chris are still able to act. So that dealt with the surge. The intimidate worked, and that's very nicely played. Very well done. Okay. Um, so. Uh, here in a minute, I'm going to have to to get into our, our last portion for the evening, but uh, we can we can deal with this. Mo, what would you like to do? Uh, then I'll turn around and look up at me. Uh, yeah. What did they see? I want to hear what the character looks like now. Um, they well. Mo, your description is going to be kind of stifled. Yes, it is. Uh, you, you see a, uh, you see a uh, kind of uh, bug-eyed, elongated helmet and some like upper body armor that has like a big stylized R, R on the uh, front of it that looks a little bit like a flight jacket. It's, it's obviously armor, but it's been stylized to look like a flight jacket. Um, and holding a tommy gun. <laughs> uh, one handed or two? Uh, two handed. I mean, 
Okay. I got the Tommy gun in my head. Okay. Now you get to act because the the villains got taken care of. There wasn't really a whole lot for them to do. So if you want to act, you can. And Peaches and Chris. But uh, Peaches and Chris, of course, you don't really see this because he's on the other side of, of this midpoint right here uh, on the roof. So you're not seeing uh, you're not seeing whoever it is up, uh, at all. Actually, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me find something out here. Let me select this. Let's do line of sight. Okay, you can see that guy, but like I said, he's got a small profile, so you'll have a pen penalty. Guess what? Yeah, he sees you, and he sees you, and you see them, of course, but you cannot see any of these three over here. Okay? So you they don't know what's going on. Mo asked if he could see the massive fuel tank on the ground. Um, well, let's go back to the ruler and find out. No. There is the the point that you would see the most, but you don't see it. Okay? What do you want to do? Mo stepped to the edge of the hangar roof and yelled. He goes, that's right. I hope you got some moxie in you, you bunch of geezers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's great. Okay, so a Tommy gun can do a long burst. Now, yes, a long burst, uh, I would presume it can also do a short burst uh, if there's a selector for it. Uh, uh, it didn't say in the description. Yeah. You know what? Long burst, then. That would, that would cost you seven ammo, but it adds plus four to your two hit. But if you roll a one through three, the weapon malfun malfunctions. Okay. Now, before you go to roll that, you have felt surges coming before. And you felt this surge coming across, but it stopped before it affected you. You still have tinglys going on, though, as, as do all of you. You're kind of tingling from the surge, but the surge didn't actually happen. Something like that. And so it would be up to Mo to determine if that is significant or not. As, as if Mo would think about what that means. Uh, well, he probably would have given a little more time, but he didn't get much smarter. Okay, so go ahead and do what you're going to do, and right. Peaches and Chris be thinking on what you want to do. If you want to go to the other channel, go ahead. Ginger continued insisting on getting into the hangar, asserting that the time for negotiation and intimidation was over. So you, you two can go ahead and move while we're dealing with Mo. Actually, just click on the Tommy gun. Click on the Tommy gun line on your... Uh, don't forget, first, click on Mo. Well, the... Yeah, the mod... Well, you don't even have to do that. Um, when the modifier comes up, you can just type in four there. Now, who are you shooting at? Uh, the, the, the sergeant. Okay. So let me get him open. Oh. Uh, All right. All right. So. No, not really. That gets you a result of six, uh, and he's got a dodge of ten. Uh, yeah. Did you add in your plus four? I uh, did. Well, it didn't come across. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Your result was an 11. So you're going to hit. Okay. Um, and then your bonus from that was, if I can get everything called up here, Captain Mo. Okay. Let's see. So an 11, 10. You get no bonus dice. 
but roll your damage value of 14. Uh, make sure that you click on Mo first, then hit your damage of 14 on your character sheet for the Tommy gun in the weapons and powers chart. Then it's going to ask you to select your target, which would be the sergeant. Oof. Okay, so two shock. The guy takes a whole two shock. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised Mo knows what either of those words mean. <laughs> Connor asked if he could recognize the voice through the helmet, even if it was a bit distorted, and Robert queried about whether any of the bad guys had actually suffered shock like they were supposed to. The answer to Robert's question being that yes, they had suffered shock in the previous round, and then the answer to both Chris's and Peach's question was you both hear Mo's voice um it's not really clear it sounds like it's behind glass but you definitely hear Mo's voice from above you peaches stood in shock for as long as the current situation would allow looking above and around her for the source of the voice though she was unable to see because the bottom of the roof over here is uh, 11 meters off the ground, and then the roof itself is 13 meters off the ground, okay? So it's, it's a hanger. It's really, really tall. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Peaches and Chris, you guys didn't move. Peaches and Chris had not moved, so they would not leave Thuban behind. Oh, okay. You're, you're, so Thuban... Uh, um, gave up his turn to be able to stop the surge, so you two are just sticking nearby him. Both Peaches and Chris decided that while standing there protecting Thuban, they would defend actively. Okay, so you rolled a 19. There you go. So, uh, Chris, you're going to have a plus one to all defenses, and then uh, Peaches, a plus six to all defenses until your next action. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I think, I think that's successful. I'm a card. Um, yes. Actually, both of you get a card. Thank you for bringing that up because I completely brain farted it. So, let's see. Ginger and Chris. Deal. Okay. All right. So, um, time for the next round. I think. Defendant to I got cards out once added by possibilities. Dice added by possibilities. Don't add a minimum of 10 this round. Okay. All right. So we should be good on that. Next turn. By the gods. All right. Faith may be used as a defense against all interaction attacks this round. Okay. Um... It is a standard scene. Heroes get to go first, and villains are fatigued. Um, and the approved action is trick. So, you four kind of discuss what you want to do. You're in close enough proximity to where you could help one another, but... Um, okay. Well, the tank is on the ground. It stands about a meter and a half in height, so about f almost five feet. Josh started off by explaining Mo should go first. Then Thuban would drop the disguise from Chris, Peaches, and himself, and then they would hurry away from the fuel tank before it could be made to explode. Well, Andrew explained he would have exploded at the previous round if he could have seen it. Josh then jokingly retracted his statement, explaining Mo should go last now. Mo was going to drop down from the hangar ceiling and jump into the fight on the ground. And this is when Peaches decided that she was going to shoot the shock troop in front of her as soon as the disguise spell was dropped. Don't forget these guys over here. Josh explained he had multi-target spells that could make them ineffective and put them in the sand, to which Ginger expressed, Good! Because they're in short range! <laughs> The merits of the plan were then discussed, Josh liking it while Ginger was less enthusiastic, noting the Stallinger concentrating to maintain the disguise spell wasn't good for him being able to act further. Chris, on the other hand, was a bit more dubious about the plan's merits, not liking it but not seeing anything better. 
Ginger then noted it would have been better to just duck inside the hangar, but she couldn't be sure about what was in there. Josh then counted down, dropping the spell, and Peaches went to take aim at the single guard, but would be unable to get the other two shock troopers. This is when Josh presented his flurry card. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, let's make sure that, that everybody is, is on the same sheet of music. Don't forget, you can move, and you have two simple actions, okay? Um, so... You know, you you just dropped that as a free action. Do you want to move? Yes, I do. I'm going to move away from the uh, fire hazard just in case. You're going to go that way? Uh, really? Okay, okay. I, I, this way, got it. Well, you can go two. You just moved one. Okay. Okay, That's now, Peaches and Chris, do you want to move? Chris reiterated how quickly he wanted to get into the hangar building, though I couldn't tell if he was running or not. Because remember, each one of those spaces is, is three meters. So if I'm not mistaken, you have ten, uh, ten move, right? So, right. yeah, so that means you've got thirty run. So you can you could get into the building and the door swings wide open, Okay. So if you want to, you can get inside this building, but I'm, I'm going to have to, we're, we're going to say walls are in your way for right now, okay? Um, and we'll go from that point. Peaches. The band asked Peaches to go next so she could handle the Nile shock troops and he could prepare a spell. So they're tw the front one is 21 meters away, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that put you at medium range so hang on a second i think it's i think it's 10 25 40 for your remington 10 20 30 so they're 21 meters away so that's actually long range for you which is a penalty of two ginger asked if she would be able to fire twice in the round to which i explained she had two simple actions each turn though the game hadn't really defined how actions work each turn so I fell back on my original Torg knowledge. You could probably fire two rounds off of the same die roll. Are you trying to hit both of the bad guys? Yes, both of these guys. Okay, so you're you're automatically going to have a penalty of four because two for range, uh, two for the second bad guy. Um, so I would say you go ahead and fire uh, first. Chris, were you going to get into the building or what? Yeah. 15 is not bad. Uh, let's see. That oh, that only gives you a result of 10, though, to hit them. Um, let's see. Let me hide these so that I can actually see what's going on. Okay. So that's where I'll, I'll pull up Shock Trooper 6 and Squad C. Uh, hello. <clears throat> okay. So he has a dodge of eight. Okay, and you had a result of ten. Um and that's after the minus four penalty. So yeah, you hit both guys. Okay, so go ahead and roll damage uh for your uh, for your Remington, and don't forget the damage is on that line. Uh, select your character first. No, I'm just gonna get down there and save. Okay. Dogfight. <sighs> this is the hardest I've ever pulled up. Um. Okay. So. It's a trace rescue. Peaches, are you still there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did I, hit him? I, I haven't. I well, um, hang on. Um, so, Peaches, I need you to select your token, open your character sheet, roll the damage for the Remington, which I do not see on my on my list. It is going to ask you to select your first target. Just select the first, uh, the, the Stormtrooper 6, Squad C. It's on the same line as your Remington 870. 
under the damage call. Uh, no. No, you just barely hit them both. So one wound, two shock. You're going to love this. Okay. So let's see. One wound and two shock. Uh, and, of course, um, that's it for the first guy. Edit. Um, delete. Delete character. So that's both of them shock troopers, by the way. Okay. So... Uh, okay, and then I've got to move this over. Okay, and then I can move him to the map layer. And then the other guy takes the same damage. I'm not going to have you roll the damage again. It was it was kind of a pain in the butt to begin with. Um, so those two guys are done. Let me edit this one and get rid of him. Delete, delete character. Yay, they're gone. So those two are taken care of. Chris, I'm still not understanding why your token is outside of the building. Did you have something else you were trying to do? Uh, no, no. Uh, here, but... Yeah. So yeah, right. that, that looks like I'm on the roof. No. Nope. Right it... so okay. Look, here. just just put put your character put your token on the roof. Trust me. The ban. Uh, now wait a minute. Hold on. You you've already acted this turn, right? Yeah, you just moved this round. Okay. Okay. So you do have an action. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to after dropping the spell, I'm going to whirl around and cast sudden burial in a medium blast uh, against as many people I can hit within uh, within this little cluster. Oh my. Okay, uh, let me... <laughs> well, let me let me crack open Thuban so that I can read this. Hopefully you've got all of the text in it. I, uh, I can read you the text right now. I'll put it in. No, I've, I've got it. I've got it. I'm looking at your character sheet right now. Medium blast radius. I'm going to have to look that up. To one meter deep. I'm looking that up too lifts five meters in the air, flips over, and then slams it back into place. A living creature in the area takes a living creature in the area? It's a medium blast radius. Hits living targets within a medium blast radius. So, okay. Uh, Ten plus one bonus die damage, and they are stymied. So, okay. So, medium blast radius. Let me... Kind of, I'm looking that up. yeah, because I'm not sure they actually have it listed in here. Point out exactly where you are aiming the spell to be. Okay, got it. So I'm going to measure out, um, we're going to measure out five meters. Okay, so him, uh, let's see who all it affects. And, and the dog. It'll affect the sergeant and the dog. I need a... Well, it can affect three targets. Okay. We're going to go ahead and give you Shock Trooper 3, Squad C, the dog, and the Shock Trooper Sergeant, Squad C. All right. Okay, so... You rolled a 13, and it's the medium blast radius. So the damage is 10 plus one bonus die. So let's see, is that in the spell itself? Um, okay, where is it? Sudden burial, okay. Um, damage is fixed 10. Okay, so it's already got a fixed damage to it. So if you hit the 10... Okay, click on Thuban first. Okay. Then click on the damage 10 in the Sudden Burial. Then when it asks you how many bonus die, or it's going to ask you to set down a target. Just choose the Squad Sergeant. I already have one BD factor in with that one. Oh, um, how? Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. I've got it. Okay, yeah. Roll it, dude. Okay. 
Okay, let's see what kind of damage we've got. A whole two shock for all of them, but... Oh, I, mean, that, I don't think that bonus die rolled correctly. 10 plus 1 BD and stymies. Yeah, it just has effect zero, so it didn't take that bonus die into account. Yeah, uh, yeah, make sure that you click on your, on Thuban again, and then click on the bonus die. Because I agree with you, that didn't figure in correctly. Okay, wow. So that that freaking bonus die, <laughs> that freaking bonus die re-rolled and re-rolled and re-rolled. Okay, so that's three wounds and six shock. These guys don't have to worry about living anymore. Okay, and, and I mean, that's going to be for the dog. And So let's see, nine... Your base damage was ten, toughness was twelve. Yeah, I agree with you. That didn't that didn't come out right. Uh, so I now, the original roll and try again. Take out the one BD. Here's okay. yeah. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, take out the one from the uh, sudden burial. And roll damage again. And and yeah, and and roll it and add the one bonus die into the calculation itself. Okay. Okay, let's see how that goes. Okay, so the total effect was a four. It was it was a good effect, but they only take two shock each and a stymie. So let me let me take care of these guys. Um, let's see, stymie, stymie, stymie. Now I need. Let's see. I'm gonna need to open ST3. Okay, this guy and the dog, and then the squad sergeant. Okay, got him. So, uh, stymied. Yeah. 